1,070 intraday high all the way down to 1,673 from August last year to March of this year. The 20% drop. And then it's since gone into a range where basically after you had a rally in May, after that March low, you went from under 1,700 up to 1,900. And then you went into a range either side of 1,800, really, if you just look at it. Up, down, up, down. During that run up in gold in, Mar in November, we crossed certain numbers, but we also had a caveat. And the caveat was we want to see silver agree with gold. And we defined a number on silver that we wanted to see it close a week out at. And that was above its three quarter moving average. Now, most people don't use that kind of average because it's a big old clumsy average. It doesn't change once every quarter, you know, instead of like a 200 day. It got up to a high weekly close in November, one and a half cents below our number and didn't close over it and then fell. So silver went right up to the starting gate and said, uh -uh, I'm not joining in. Not yet. OK. And so they both fell back down. Now, what's going on in gold and silver, if you think fundamentally, aside from the technical noise, and it really is noise. Gold's been, you know, mid to upper 1800s, lower 1700s repeatedly following that March low, which has not been taken out since March low of, last, of this year. Just noise. It's like, you know, who, who's in charge here? Ever since mid-June, which is when the Fed first had those minutes that came out after their meeting that announced the good possibility that they were going to shift policy. They used the word taper. That has spooked gold bugs intensely. And there have been at least four sell-offs that I can identify that are of the $100 nature since that mid-June break, counting that one, where you get the sell-off based on, oh, gosh, the Fed's going to tighten money. They were not longer going to have inflation, et cetera. Dream on. Okay. And gold will drop $100. Next thing you know, it's, it's corked back up. And so the people who sold that sell-off, they're, they're back to even again. They're not making any money. Okay, it's just noise. How come gold's not collapsing? I mean, if the Fed's going to end the game, right? You know, that's what they said. We're going to end this. We're going to stop this inflation. Well, gold is probably the smartest market on the planet. It's been around longer than any of the other markets we're trading. Dollar indexes, cryptos, S&P 500. It's been around thousands of years. And it is always protected against the decay in government-issued money units. No, it's fiat money. If you overlay a chart of, the, of gold, go back 50 years and get an M2 chart from the St. Louis Federal Reserve, just overlay it on a gold chart, you'll see that's what gold is paying most attention to is the continual degradation in money. It is not waiting for other things to tell it what to do. There's a couple good examples, and this is a, this is a broad thing. We're not talking micro right now. Think about the correlation people think there must be between the dollar negatively and gold. Because if the dollar strong, gold must go down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's not a good correlation. If you go back and look at it, it doesn't hold up well because the dollar really is only one of several major fiat developed market economy index, uh, currencies. It's not the only one that's degrading rapidly. Uh, so is the euro, so is the yen and others. So gold is looking at all of them. It's not just looking at the dollar. If you look at a dollar index and go back to 2015, now what happened in 2015? Gold had collapsed from you know 1900 level down to 10,000, uh, 1,050 level. Okay, big collapse. So in late 2015, gold had been cut in half almost, and the dollar had had a rally. That happened to be inverse at that point, actually. Gold, the dollar had rallied from 12, 2012 to 15. But then in 2015, if you'll just get a chart of the dollar index, go to your computer screen, find a monthly bar chart of the dollar index from 2015 to the present, you could draw a line straight across the screen at about the current price level, 95, 96 on the dollar index, where the action for the last six years has been half, oh, half of five, six points above there and five, six points below there. We're smack in the middle of a nothing, one of the most dormant, narrow percentage range in dollar index history. And yet gold doubled during that time.
So it wasn't the dollar that caused gold to double in price, okay? And where's gold right now? It's trading around 1800, what? That's a percent or so below the high close in 2011. So it's not like it's collapsing, okay? This domino structure that they built, this huge bubble, beyond any bubble I've ever seen in the US stock market history. And we know the policies that underwent, undergirded this thing. You know, you can't say, oh, it was a strong economy. Get a chart from the St. Louis Fed called Fed Funds Rate. You can download it and look at it. You don't have to print it. See 50 years of that and see where we were in 2009 on that Fed fund rate chart, just above zero. Never in history has it been that low. 50 years to look back. It popped back up a couple percent during that time and then back down again to the mat. We've had 13 years of rates of the cost of money defined by the state, not by market forces, but by intellectuals with power who tell us money's free. It's free in Japan, free in Europe. Okay. What does that do to reality of individuals, families, corporations, even governments, state governments that are planning budgets? When you have a major factor in your thought process, in your planning process, the cost of money priced effectively at zero, and you base decisions upon that, long duration decisions based on the assumption that the price of money will stay low or anywhere near that low. That's like building a bridge, you know, with quicksand pillars. I mean, it just, it cannot sustain. And therefore many errors have been committed. The errors you can, micro errors, millions of micro errors in the economy. And when they come undone, based on, it's like being given drugs for 13 years. You make a lot of bad decisions, okay? And you got to think about it. Money is, is the most essential commodity out there. It's the interstitching of, of society. It's the way, again, we're looking for silver to agree with gold in the next upturn. I said it was a three quarter moving average we're using as our metric. And as it happens in the case of silver, the trigger number is exactly at the three quarter average. Case of gold, it wasn't. So as we plot our momentum charts, we have a structure, a, re a resistance line that stopped that last rally precisely at the three quarter average or on the oscillator at our zero line.